thank you so much for inviting me to come to your conference. I'm thankful in more than two ways. One was uh, I had a surgery before Easter and um, I didn't really recover well from this. So I had headaches for nearly two weeks and couldn't really work through this day. So, and still I feel my body is quite weak, so he doesn't like this air condition here. Uh, probably you are more used to this. I'm really thankful for your invitation. It shows me also not only to link to each other, but it shows me also um, how unit, united we are today, today in this world mission and how we have to do things together. I learn a lot here, and it's something like it said in the Bible, um, I heard a lot, but now I see. So um, I do want to uh, say a, a short thing about the um, European Evangelical Mission Association, but not that much. We have 14 members, um, mainly northern countries. So the southern countries don't have a mission movement. Um, they are more mission, mission fields than we are somehow. Uh, in the beginning, when I attended these European EEMA conferences and the meetings, my feeling was always every national movement set his numbers of agencies, his numbers of missionaries, and the budget they have. And then my feeling was there is an internal ranking which is the best country doing the best mission move, uh, mission from the, their country. So I think we have overcome this, thankfully. Today we work a little closer together in Europe and we focus more on task groups where we work together. That is like mobilizing young people and what is very actual, the question of refugee work. How do we do member care on our missionaries? And also Another issue is community development, where we do things now together. A conference like this here and uh, giving a report about Europe is a good time to sit down, reflect, where are we in Europe right now? And I tell you, this is not easy to say. I mean, there's so many things going on. Europe has 47 countries. 28 only belong to the European Union. There's only, if I compare to Asia, only 740 million people living there. It's said that 54% are Catholic, 12.5% are Protestant, 8% are Orthodox Christians, and 3 to 4% are Muslims. It sounds great, the numbers of let's say Protestant Christians, but to be realistic, most of them are named Christians and don't attend the church. They only keep the membership, I would say like an internal, no, eternal insurance. You never know what happens when you die. So it's better to be a member of a church. I would say some um, Professor Stanley from Edinburgh said, something on Christianity, um, that Christianity not began in the Western world, and it wasn't a Western thing. Only 300 years it was very important in the West. And it is, as it is said here, Christianity today is in the majority world. So it has changed. But my question today is, we know that. You know that. We as Christians know that, that that has changed. But if you hear the public media, then they always still like to claim Christianity is something somewhere from the West, and you have to blame the West. And therefore, I have to think we have to overcome this as well, also in the public. Refugees in Europe. I don't know what you heard, but in your media, is um, presented what, what is your knowledge about the development. I, th I think even the numbers are difficult to count. We estimate to have one million refugees in Germany, which came in the last year. But there came so many so fast 
that, that, that there's a guess that 200,000 are not registered. So we don't know where they are. We guess some have moved to the Netherlands. Many like to go to Sweden. Some have relatives in the UK, so try to find a way to the UK. What do we do with these people? The good thing is, my feeling was, especially we as evangelical Christians, we love to live in our comfort zone. And right now, this raises real questions. If you have next to your church a refugee house, and the people going in and out, so the people wake up and say, okay, we have to help these refugees. We have to give them clothes, we have to train them, give them language skills, but also we have to confess our beliefs. And I, to me, it's something new. So the people really stand up and learn a lot now and ask, how, do we, how could we confess to a Muslim? That's great. I hope that there will much more develop out of this. On the other side, we have Christians, yeah, they are fearful. They, are, they fear the Muslims will take over. But I mean, how do you compare that? I mean, there were uh, one million refugees coming and uh, 82 million people in the country living there. I don't believe they take over. Um, let me rush to another thing. Mission from Europe is very much done by agencies. And as far as I know from other countries, it's done by churches. So my feeling is uh, we have, as agencies, agencies, how to link much closer again to churches, to be relevant for the churches. As I always feel, mission agencies can't do Matthew F, what is claimed in Matthew 28 alone. So we need to work closer together again. Um, another trend, especially in the Western world, I don't know what will, will come here, is uh, long-term missionaries versus short-term missionaries. Many young people in Europe have the opportunity by their passport to travel worldwide. There are not many visa regulations, and they use it. So they travel to various places for short term, like two weeks, for one year. Some do it because they have a call. Some do it because it's good for their curriculum, for their vita. And some do it because they don't know what to do with their life. I do hope they get the call while they are there. The bad thing side of the story is I see a declining number of, of long-term missionaries. And what is relevant from my perspective for world, for world mission is to have long-term missionaries who really get into the culture, who really understand the language, and that takes much more time. Um, another thing what is maybe typical for Europe and where we have to change things is if we speak about partnerships in Europe, um, the natural thing is that people think, the underlying thing is they think in projects. And they think about in project cycles. So, somehow it is clear we have to do the, all the accountability thing, budget things, and do this because on behalf of the boat donors and also, but if I then go, which is more my direction, to East Africa, and I'm coming there, if I speak about partnerships, the first question is, do you, are you a member of my family? Are you a member of my tribe? Or at least a member of our church? So relation is much more important. And if relation is much more important, how do we bother about budgets? Brother, if my mother is ill right now, you know I need the money for this. And I, we have to understand this somehow. And I wish we could bring this both together. Somehow it's good to have projects, but relationships are the sustainable, lasting thing. I think we have to learn a little bit in Europe from this. Um, let me conclude which what I see a little bit difficult from my few in Europe. Now there's a, I heard a story in the UK. They just right now have a discussion about what is 
an evangelical. How do you describe being evangelical? And the discussion goes on. They now name seven tribes. Seven tribes which should be evangelical. But they can't even agree about the definition what is evangelical. If I read some statistics, they say, I said in the last years, there should be between 45,000 and 50,000 denominations. Dear brothers and sisters, um, as a secular person, how do I know I go to the right church? How do I know I belong to the right denomination? It is so difficult. And then, and that's my final thing, what I want to read is John 17, 20 to 23. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will be in, my, in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father. Father, just as you are in me and I'm in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one, I in them and you in me, so that may, they may be brought by complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me, and I have loved them even as you have loved me. Thank you for your invitation. It's a sign of unity to me, and we really want to live this, and we want to be part of you from you as well. Thank you very much.